Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm going to pick up right where we left off, which was getting the uh, components into our application frame. So we've got the title, we've got the position and size, we have the right number of components, but we don't have the correct component yet. And I can just sort of hack that in um, for now, like this. And actually, let's do it this way. So if it doesn't work, we get a more descriptive error message. So we're expecting a forecast table. And we actually have, come on, uh, there we go. We actually have a, a J panel that should fail. Yep, expected forecast table, but was J panel. J panel. So that's easily enough fixed. Now we just say new forecast table. Now that's not going to work because it wants our table model. Um, now is there a well, I can just pass in a null for now. That will cause our test to pass. There we go. That will probably crash, though, if I actually try to run it. No, it doesn't crash, but it doesn't do anything nice either. Um, we probably need some sort of error handling. Um, okay, so now we've got a forecast table with nothing in it. How can we ensure that we get the correct forecast table in there? I don't know the answer to that one. Okay. Well, the forecast table just takes any sort of model. So... Let's, we could assert that the forecast table contains the correct sort of model, I suppose. This, it starts to get kind of ugly. But let's, let's see if this works and then we can clean it up. So we've got our forecast table. Can we get the model out of that? We can. Okay, so from there we can assert um, that the forecast table model should be a stock market table model. I think that's the correct term. Yep. It is ugly, but I believe that will work. So it's going to say expected this, but was default table model. Oh, interesting. So if it's a null, it takes a default table model. Hmm. Um, and now, from there, we can say that we want our particular table model. takes a stock market, which could also be not. Oh, isn't this interesting? The tangled webs we weave. And that does work, but this, when we run it, should crash. Yeah, there's our crash. So, um, see, this starts to get to the point of how much do you really want to test? I mean, there is no way in our stock market table model, I don't believe, to get at the actual underlying stock market object. Um, now, we could make sure that we were using the correct one by looking at column count or just making sure that it doesn't crash. 
Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and do that for now. But there's there are some things that I don't bother testing, and we're getting close to that mark. Basically, the rule is test everything that could possibly break, um, which is just about everything. But the one thing I don't test is just whether or not I typed in the code I thought I did. So, if, for example, if I have a method that it's nothing but call another method, I'm probably not going to test that I wrote that method properly. Um, it's just, it's so much work to test these little things and so little benefit. You really want your test to test the behavior of your underlying system, not the implementation, not that you coded what you thought, but that the code you wrote works the way you thought. Um, so we're getting to the point where, I don't know if we're getting a lot out of this, but um, we can take this one step further for now. We can ask that the row count be... 40 years. Um, and that will fail if we don't have the proper thing in there. It's 41 actually. And I'm, this is extremely ugly, uh, and I realize that. I will either clean it up or just decide that I don't care that much about what I'm doing here. Okay, that's going to fail with a null pointer exception. And now... In fact, I'm just going to pull over this. In fact, I kind of like the way I wrote that. I'll pull over the whole thing. That should pass the test. I don't know if that's actually going to work the way it's supposed to. Well, it's working except for the scroll bars. Um, which raises an interesting point. Uh, okay. Now let's slow down a little bit, take a look at these tests. I mean, we have tests that are forcing us to write what we are supposed to write. Uh, this is probably unnecessary, actually, so let's go ahead and take that out. Uh, the problem is, is that they don't, I don't know how much these actually help. Um, I mean, it is kind of nice to know that we've got this stuff. I mean, the fact that we've got particular values hard-coded here, I'm not so concerned that that's not being tested properly because um, that's all going to be changed anyway. What does bother me is just the mess that we have here. But it is kind of nice that we're checking those things. So... I don't know, I'm a little bit torn. I think what I'm going to do here is going to break this into two tests. First, I'm going to say 
forecast table um, contains or should contain proper or correct model. So at least we're more explicit about what we're testing here. And then this can be um, Okay, that's working. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is the kind of thing that makes GUIs, testing GUIs, a little bit iffy. There's another approach involving mock objects, um, which it suffers the same problem, at least in the way I'm doing it. There's other ways of doing mock objects that, honestly, I don't understand very well. Uh, that proponents say it doesn't have this problem. But the problem I have with the way I typically do mock objects is that they specify the implementation of the class rather than the behavior. And you really don't want to specify the implementation of your program. You want to make sure that it works the way it's supposed to without saying how it's implemented. It's sort of the old object-oriented encapsulation thing in that we should be able to change the implementation of a class without changing its tests. Uh, as long as we don't change any of the public method names in order to, or any of the public method semantics. Uh, that gives us the ability to refactor without having test break all the time, which is a good thing. Uh, if you've got an application where every time you refactor you have to change your tests uh, for refactorings that don't change public interfaces, um, you've got a testing problem and one of the really common ways people run into that is by overusing mock objects. This kind of thing here is, is really similar. We're diving down into the internals of how application frame is implemented, and uh, I'm not really liking that very much. But I can't think of a better way of doing it right now. So, you know, I guess I'll just have to wait. Uh, typically, when I run across something I don't like, uh, I don't know how to solve it, I just let it go. And um, come back to it later when I've got more ideas. So the one thing that we haven't done yet that we need to do is we need to actually make this contain a scroll pane. So let's tell it that this should be a J scroll pane. That's going to fail. that failing. We are just about out of time, um, so we'll pick up where we uh, with this next time. So thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.